this morning for our lesson today. Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. Wow. Yeah. I don't even know where to begin with the amazing triumphs and accomplishments of this spirit. But, but what I will say is look at this jacket because it says it all. The man is on fire.
and on the third, and on the fourth, and on the thirty-seventh, and at his fifty-third year, <laughs> like when, 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 when is enough, enough? When is enough lying on the floor, simply lying around, waiting for spirit to move? When is it enough that we are going to be the ones? You know, even with the song, sorry, Tracy, wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait in the water. God's going to trouble the water, right? So even let's, God, trouble the water. <clears throat> the water's trouble. But if I'm sitting over here like, oh, cool. What's up, Steph? God, trouble the waters. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything if I'm not willing to move to the waters that have been troubled to receive healing. So even when, I know you've heard the story about the guy in the flood, and he's like, God gonna save me, and the boat, and the God gonna save me, and the, and the helicopter, God gonna save me, and he drowns. <laughs> and he's standing before God, and he's like, ah, I'm mad at you. Why are you angry at me? Because I trusted that you were going to. Dude, I sent you a boat, a scooter, a, 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 a dog pulling a, a skateboard. Like, what else did you want me to send you? How many of us are doing that, though? We're waiting for that magical something to be the thing that's going to change us and transform us instead of taking ownership and accountability. Because we are it. There is no God outside of us to do anything. It's us. We are the ones. Now, another thing that Gail said, well, actually, I'll get to that in a moment. Gail, don't let me forget. I want to share something with you because there's this, she said, okay, thank you. I appreciate that because I might. Because you know Ray will get on a tangent and squirrel and we'll be lost. So, just, just there, there we go. Just saying. I thought we were talking. Okay, never mind. So there's this guy that some of you may have heard of, Eric Butterworth. Anybody, yes. anybody not familiar with him? Okay, so let's just think of Eric Butterworth would be considered one of the key names in Unity and New Thought. He is a, a champion of this philosophy, started at Unity in New York City, and extremely well written. If you haven't perused any of his Text, I, yeah, trust. So I was reading the concentric perspective recently, and this is what it came up with. In the, intro, in the introduction of the book, he says, <laughs> we sometimes call ourselves truth seekers, but the truth is there is no need for seeking. We must first learn not to seek out there, for when we seek, there is a tendency to go window shopping and thus to achieve a consciousness that is a patchwork of metaphysical slogans. Truth is within, not something to search for, but something to awaken to and release. Truth is at the center of you, the mystical point where God becomes you, a point of changeless oneness. You exist which means stand forth. You are the activity of God expressing or pressing out into visibility as you. What part of the book did I say this came from? The introduction. The introduction. A couple paragraphs later, he then goes on to say, the center within you is God at the point of you, at the root of you, the ground of your being. You are being, capital B, you are being, being you. You are the self-livingness of God. In a more real sense, you are the self-givingness of God. The highest objective of human experience should always be to give way to life. That's just the introduction. And so the point is, the idea is, the concept is, that Butterworth is pointing to is, there are these concentric circles, and at the far out rings are the things that are the most obvious about us. 
When you look at me, other than this fancy Las Vegas coat, when you first look at me, I'm just saying. Wait, I feel like I should be, never mind. I'm not Liberace, I can't do that. <laughs> See, squirrel! See what happened? Give it a step. <laughs> and in the farthest ring, when I, if I were to say, and believe me, there's nothing you can say that's going to offend me, so I don't care, so say what comes to your mind. When you look at me, if someone were to say, describe me. Give me some of the things that you would use to describe me. Energetic. Wow. Energetic. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> but, but let's pause for them, because those, you need me to do something. We're just talking about, I just, this. Tall. Colorful. Tall, colorful. Keep going. Hands. Hands. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's pregnant. I love you. Keep going. <laughs> we can make this the rest of the day. No. Give me two more. Happy. Slim. Happy. Brown. Slim. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> those are the outer rings, because those are the things that we see. And then we get closer and closer in with the things that you can't see that either I need to share with you, like an occupation, my hobbies, my interests, favorite foods. Then the rings come in and in and in and in. Am I a brother? Am I a father? Am I a son? In and in, because you don't see those right now. So in some way, you need to be coming into God. the until you get to the center where there is only God. But see, we live from the outer rings so much that we don't even pay attention to the center of it all. We drop the stone and it sends ripples out and we chase the ripples without paying attention to where the ripples originated. So if we're going to talk about this whole idea of rising and shining, then we have to be very clear on what this means. You know, and, and the funny thing is, so how many of you have ever read, like, read Charles or Fillmore, or Myrtle Fillmore, or, or uh, Eric Butterworth, or anybody, and you get mad at them and you shake the book? Yes. Like, oh, 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 oh. If you were here, I would... Yeah, too much truth. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm reading this, this little introductory passage when he says, you exist, which means stand forth, right? And then going back when he said metaphysical slogans. So as soon as I read, you exist, which means to stand forth, my mind immediately jumped to, I am not, there, there's this idea of if you're not living, then you're just existing. Yeah, but he just said, <laughs> he, just, he just said it to be the thing, you exist, which means to stand for it. So wait a minute, wait a minute, I have to, I have to, yes, you do. Because that's what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to always reassess, never take any slogan, any words, any concepts, any belief systems at face value, ever. How many of you have a smartphone right now? How many of you had a cell phone when cell phones first came out? How many of you would change your smartphone in right now for that phone that you had then? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. You would? Yeah. You would change it? Yeah, we need to have a conversation. <laughs> How many of you have whatever PC or laptop right now? How many of you would trade that in for what computers were in the early 70s? <laughs> no. Well, why not? Don't have room for it. Don't have room. <laughs> this is don't have room for it. You need factories. <laughs> See, the idea is we always upgrade. When when Ford first created the first Model T, how many of you would trade what you're driving now for that? Why not? Too much work to get it started. So everything that we have, in some way, shape, or form, upgrades. Our phones upgrade. The software on our phones upgrade. Our computers upgrade. Our cars upgrade. Everything upgrades. Do we? Yes. Is it easy, easier, to get stuck on the metaphysical slogans that Butterworth is talking about? Is it easier that when something happens and we, you know, we'll, we'll throw them out there? God is all there is. God is good. Amen. <laughs> There's only one power, one presence. God the good, omnipotent. This too shall pass. 
This too shall pass. What's in your consciousness? Like attracts like. Law of attraction. Maybe it's time for us to really, really, really get grounded, get centered, purge, and start new. Put everything that we have outlived into the tomb. Wasn't it said, let the dead bury the dead? Any concepts that we're holding on to, any paradigms, ideas, any of that that we are holding on to about anything. Because, see, there's this idea. Thank you for reminding me, Gail. There's this idea. <laughs> when she read and she said, Myrtle healed her, her body, and we focus on healing the body as in our physical temple body temples. But what about the body of our affairs? Do we use the same healing power on the body of our affairs, whether that is business, family, relationships, finances, all of the things that are those circles rippling out? Do we use the same healing consciousness on all of them? Or is it easier for us to take the road most traveled, because it's easy. It's been charted. Been there, done that. Is that one reason why we like to stay in those comfort zones? Because it's comfortable. Even if it's painful, it's comfortable. You know, a lot of us will say things like, we would love to be a millionaire. Really? Are you working in millionaire consciousness now? Or do you do what Ray used to do? Because Ray don't do it now. Ray prepping. Ray getting, Ray getting the bank account ready. The prepping in the mind by saying, oh, oh, if I could hit, do you know if I could hit for $400 million, what I would do with that? And as quick as that thought comes in of what I would do with it, it's the, I wonder which family member would call me first. <laughs> would I answer or do I tell them no in a text? So then I start going through all of the people I now have to say no to. So I've shifted my consciousness from ah, being open and receiving and expansive to now I have to close off because I have to start saying no. I'm saying no to people who don't even know I got the money yet because I don't have the money but I'm already saying no. I'm practicing my no, which means I'm standing and I'm grounding and I'm existing in a state of no. And if I'm already in a state of no, then clearly that which I want will not flow. I don't like those rules. That's no fun. But we're doing it in so many areas. Like I said, family, friends, the government. We're doing it in all of these areas where we shake our fists and curse the wind. We sit in the dark room and we curse the darkness. Instead of standing forth, rising, and shining. Because we know that the moment we do this, the moment we rise and shine, all eyes turn to us. It can be no other way. You're shining. When you play that good, you can't hide. It doesn't work. And truthfully, when you do, why would you want to? John 10.10, 10, the thief, the thief, enunciate, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. One of the other translations, I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Another translation, and that they might have it more abundantly. Truth came so that we may have life in all of the facets. And I'm not just talking about life experience, like 
you know, you get knocked down and you get back up. That's an element of life. I'm talking about life with a capital L life. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is infinite and ever-expanding consciousness. And that life is my life now. That's the life I'm talking about. That life lived abundantly. Because when we're anchored in that life, then all of the love that is possible flows not just to us, but it flows through us. It flows in us. It shows up as us. Light in, through, and as. Peace in, through, and as. Health and well-being in, through, and as. But to whom much is given, much is required. And we don't like that part of the contract. We like being comfortable and playing small. But what if I told you right here, right now, that there are enough people in this room right now that if we joined in one accord and declared, not simply affirmed, but declared that right here, right now, this time, on this day, that we are enveloping this planet in love and light and joy so that no one needs Start a war. Engage in a war. Because the consciousness of war is now extinct. There are enough of us in this room that we could generate that. But we have to end the idea of war in our own minds. I cannot be at war with my brothers. That's why I said in the Bible, you know, bah, 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 before you lay down your, your go make peace. I don't like these rules very much. If we want there to be peace on earth, <coughs> yes, there is peace on earth. But it must begin right here. Yes, there is love on earth. It exists right now because we are here. God is here. God is in the house. Right here, right now. Not tomorrow. Not yesterday. Right here, right now. It is. There is nothing that needs to be sought. It is. We simply need to stand forth in it. Stand forth as it. Be willing to live, move, and breathe from that consciousness. But are we? There's the rub. Are we willing to die to be reborn? Are we willing to let go of anything that is holding back to rise and shine as a new... How many gardeners are in the room? What's the difference between an annual and a perennial? <laughs> Perennials come back. They renew. One renews and the other one you got to plant every year. Why do we not understand this spring is this way of nature reminding us it is time for you to bloom anew? You are not supposed to be the same old, same old. I am not supposed to be the same Ray that I was at 15, 14. Thank God that I was. I'm not even supposed to be the same Ray that I was this time last year. If God is this ever-expanding consciousness that is always demonstrating greater and greater and greater and even greater abundance and more so, and that which it is, we are. Ernest Holmes says in one of his books, The Healing Anatomy of Prayer, God in me, as me, is me. God in me, as me, is me. Maybe I'm supposed to bloom into that. Maybe I'm supposed to rise and shine into that. Maybe when I go to the store, I allow that to be what goes to the store. Maybe when I go to vote, when voting comes around, I allow that to be what guides me. Maybe when I'm going to a family reunion that I really don't want to go to, I allow the peace and joy and all that that is as the abundance of life to be what goes as me. And not just as me, but that it goes before me, above and below, right side and left. That it's all that I am. Is that something that we're willing to shift into? To rise into? Because if I were to ask you, suppose where you are right now, 
and I don't mean the chair, in your life, is exactly where you're going to be 20 years from now. Are you content enough and joyful enough and abundant livingly enough to say, if I have to live with the same relationships I have, the same finances I have, the same, the same, the same in all areas of my life for the next 20 years, I'm good. If the answer is no, then the invitation is change it. What if I say 50 years? For the next 50 years. And some of y'all are looking at me like, great. <laughs> we ain't playing that game right now. We ain't playing that game right now. For the next 50 years, nothing in your life changes. Would you be satisfied? Everything stays the same. The same arthritis I feel that my doctor tells me is in my left hip, whatever. That, for the next 50 years, I still feel that ache. For the next 50 years, everything, the same family trauma, next 50, no, I'm not satisfied. So we're being called, we are being invited to say, well, let the dead bury the dead. Lay it to rest. Put it behind you. You know, there's a, remember the, and then I'm going to, because Tracy just hit your time. I'm <laughs> saying, she keeps me on because, because, squirrel. Remember the story when Yeshua goes to the desert, and, you know, he's tempted by Satan, and there's a part where he's like, get thee behind me, Satan. Right, get thee behind me, Satan. Well, we know that they're literally Satan, now, allegorically, metaphorically, metaphysically, Satan is the father of all lies, that which lies to us. Whatever part of us that accepts and believes in the lie is that aspect, that consciousness. And Yeshua said, get thee behind me. Because if you are behind me, then you are gone, for I am moving this way. I am moving forward. And so I let you go. I let you fall by the wayside. And I go hither. Are we willing to let the lies go? To let the deceptions go? To live anew? To rise and shine? That's the question. And that's the invitation. And so it is. Amen.